Next, we'll say a few things about voltage. You might ask, what causes electric current? And the answer is voltage. You can think of voltage as that which makes the current flow. And it's a little bit tricky to understand voltage, but it's helpful to think of it by comparing it to something that you already understand. And you're already familiar with water flowing down a hill, so we're going to compare electricity flowing through a wire to water flowing down a hill. So I'm going to draw two pictures here. In the first picture, I'll just imagine a hillside here. And let's imagine there's a spring and water is coming out of the side of the hill and flowing down. Now the thing to recognize is that the water starts up here at a position of higher potential energy. It's up high. Water up high has more gravitational potential energy than water down low. And it flows down here to a point of lower potential energy. And it does that naturally. Water always flows downhill. It never flows uphill. It flows downhill and it does that naturally all by itself. You don't have to do something to get it to flow that way. It automatically moves downhill. Now think about an electron or electrons flowing through a wire. So I'll draw a little piece of wire here. And electrons move through the wire. So let's imagine a little electron here inside the wire moving through the wire that turns out it's moving from a place of higher energy to a place of lower energy and they do that all by themselves and then this this electron moving inside the wire is the current flow or the flow of charge the electric current and that happens automatically. If you can have one place that is higher electrical energy and another place that is lower electrical energy, the electrons will always move or the charge will always move to a place of lower potential energy, just like water naturally fl flows downhill to a place of lower potential, potential energy. And the word voltage is the term that we use to describe this difference in electrical potential energy between these two points. And when we talk about voltage, we're always dealing with two points. And the term voltage refers to the potential energy difference between the two points. So if you think about a battery, for example, typical battery that you might use in your flashlight might look something like this. And what does it say written on the side? It typically has written there 1.5 volts. That's a certain amount of voltage and also on the battery you see a little plus sign and a little negative sign. The two ends of the battery are the two points. If you hook a wire from one end running around to the other, charge is going to come out one end of the battery and naturally go to the other. There are chemical reactions inside the battery that force electrons out one end and pull them in the other. Or another way to say that is the that the chemical reactions put electrons at one end of the battery or cause one end of the battery to be a place of higher electrical potential energy than the other. And so the electrons will naturally flow from one place to the other as long as they have a path that, that they can follow. They won't flow through the air, or at least not very easily, but when you hook up a wire to it, and you might not just have a wire, you might have a light bulb in there or something else, but whatever it is, you're providing a path for the electrons to flow. And they naturally move along that path because they naturally go from a place of higher potential energy to a place of lower potential energy. Your car battery is typically a big rectangular block. And there are two terminals sticking up. Sometimes they're called posts or sometimes they're called terminals. And if you look on the battery, you'll see a plus sign written on the battery next to one and a minus sign next to the other. And that's indicating that one of the posts or one of the terminals is positive and one is negative. And if you hook up a wire, and you don't want to do this to your car battery, you don't want to run a wire straight from one side to the other. But if you did, the electrons would naturally flow from one side to the other. And they're naturally going from a point of higher potential energy 
to a point of lower potential energy. And it's the chemical reactions that are causing that, that difference in potential energy. Now if you just actually do this, if you actually take a wire and hook it up to a, a battery like that, the wire will get hot. The electrons flowing through it will heat it up. If you have a bulb in there, that will reduce the amount of current flow. But if you just connect a straight wire, then there's going to be very little electrical resistance and you'll get a lot of current flowing through there and the wire will get hot enough and you can burn your hand just from a, a setup like this just from a simple battery and a wire if you do this to a car battery you're going to get a tremendous amount of current flow car batteries are designed to get your automobile engine started and it takes a lot of energy to get that large device turning around and so the car batteries are designed to produce very, very high electrical current. So don't do this. Don't hook a wire up from one post of the battery directly to the other. You'll probably burn yourself, uh, damage the battery, start a fire or something, but don't ever short circuit the battery in that way. Um, also think about a household electrical outlet. Notice there are two little plugs and when you plug something in you have your a lamp, for example, that you're plugging in, the cord looks something like this. And there are two prongs here that plug into these, uh, these little slots on the socket. And there's actually two wires inside, the, um, inside the, the cord here. One running up to one of those. Let me draw that in a different color. One running up to one of those and another wire running up to another and they're they're surrounded by this plastic insulation you don't actually see the wire it's covered in plastic because you don't want to uh, see it you certainly don't want to touch it but the wires are inside there and there are two and the electric company sends electricity to your house such that one of these slots is at a higher electrical potential than the other and just as water will naturally flow from a higher point to a lower point, the electrons will naturally flow from a place of higher energy to a place of lower energy. And when you plug something in, you provide a path for them to flow. The electrons will flow down one wire, go through your lamp or through your toaster or something, and then come back to the other wire. Now it turns out that the power company provides electrons with a lot of energy on one side only on one side of this outlet. The other one is basically is, is simply neutral. So only one side is what we call hot. And the other side is just a place for the electrons to return to when you provide a path by plugging something in. And then one other, other thing that I'll mention while we're on this topic is the little third hole on the electrical outlet. If you look at the electrical outlet you've got two slots there where the wires plug into and there's also this little third hole down here and that's called the ground wire and um, some plugs have three prongs on them and the, the ground wire is literally a wire that runs back through the walls and through your electrical panel box and into the ground literally down into the earth and if there's a problem if there's a say something that goes wrong in an, in, in an elect electrical device and there's a surge of electricity and um, that's, that could be dangerous. This just provides an extra place for it to go where it can get out of the house and into the ground and, and not cause any problems. Devices that are properly grounded are typically less prone to damage in an, in an electrical accident and less likely to cause damage to you. Something that's properly grounded is safer than something that isn't.